Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm blessed. I bless the Lord, praise God for today. Now, I know we are dealing with the spirit of prophecy. And, and, and yesterday, oh my God, <laughs> listen, the word of God is instructive and it is truth. The word of God will not bend because of you. I know the Spirit of God took us into a dimension that I was, I was wondering, okay, where are we going to praise God? But I believe someone have been greatly blessed by that message of yesterday. Can we call for that daily bread? Let's listen. Do this with the attitude of faith. Praise God. Are you ready? Talk to me now. Are you ready? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm so ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Not just for myself. I'm ready to see a miracle happen in your life today. So join me right now with a smile on your face. Praise God. Say this. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we, we, we are talking about fulfilling the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy causes you to fulfill prophecy. And you see, ah, ah, we're talking about the book of life and whose name is in the book of life and whose name is not in the book of life. I remember on, on, on Monday, I told you Judas Iscariot, his name was not written in the book of life. And I explained that to you on Monday, I think. Monday or Tuesday, I explained that to you, why his name, why I told you his name is not written in the book of life. And several people like that, their names are not in the book of life. I'll show you an example. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. I, I, I will show you this. You know, sometimes you read scriptures, you, you, you just don't understand, okay, why, why is this thing written? Praise God. Acts chapter 8. Look at verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Now, Simon was a man who used to be a sorcerer. He, 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 he was, in fact, the, the Bible says that they, the people taught him to be the great power of God in Samaria then. And Philip came and started doing signs and wonders. And he, he saw, you know, they say when power jam power, praise God, the lesser power would bow. So he saw what was greater than him. So he bowed to it. And the Bible says he began to follow Philip. He began to follow Philip everywhere. Philip was one of the disciples of Jesus. One of the people that got born again and, and walked and, 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 and one of the disciples. So he, he began to follow Philip everywhere Philip went. And then there was a problem. These guys that were getting saved were not getting filled with the Holy Ghost. So words went to Jerusalem. That's something a revival is taking place. People are turning to the Lord in Samaria. Wow. And then the Bible said they sent Peter and John to go check out what's going on there. And when they got there, they noticed the people were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They loved God. They loved coming to church, but they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. So Peter and John began to minister the Holy Ghost to them by laying on of hands. Now that's what happened when people don't receive this thing from the beginning. You have to lay hands on them. See that now? But, but you could have gotten, you could have received the Holy Ghost from the first day you gave your heart to Christ. You could have started speaking in tongues from that very day. I'm telling you the truth. You could have. But now, when you have come in and, and you, your heart is now set for this truth and you're receiving it without the expression. Now, actually, you couldn't have gotten born again without the Holy Ghost. But most times, people have a problem expressing the Holy Ghost. Now, that's why we lay hands on them. So it will, it will, like, it's, it forces out that expression. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, so now, Peter and John got to Samaria and they began to minister the Holy Ghost to, to, to the brethren. Then this guy, Simon, saw that anyone they laid their hands on received the Holy Ghost. Of course, that meant with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So, wow, whoa, something is happening here. And then he thought about it for a while, you know. And the Bible says he offered them money. Say, guys, 
ah, today's service was great. Yeah. And I, I, I have a seed I want to sow in your life. So that this thing that you do, I want to see it walk in me. Yeah. Where did that thought come from? Have you ever thought about it? I don't think that was what Philip was preaching. So where did that thought come from? That thought came from his former dealings with the devil. He knew that the spirit or anointing can be contacted by money. Follow me now. So now we see this happening here, verse 18. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, they may receive the Holy Ghost. Now, you look at this, it looks harmless. We do it today. <laughs> It looks harmless. This guy comes with, with, with money and says, hey, I want to sow a seed in your life. I want to tap into the anointing in your life so that me too, whoever I lay my hands on, the Holy Ghost will come on them. I mean, you, 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 you ought to think, wow. I mean, I mean, imagine if Simon now, because we are going to leave, Peter and John, they are going to leave eventually. So imagine how Simon, Philip should do the same. Philip, can you see your own convert is, is, is smart enough to know how to tap into the anointing. You, you you've been preaching these things since no, nobody got filled with the Holy Ghost. Philip, Learn from your young converts. That's what we will say today. So when we go, oh, we know that the revival is going to be sustained. Someone is there ministering the Holy Ghost to these people. And we know that the revival is going to be great. But look at what Peter said. Peter, but Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You see, the thinking was the problem. Peter said, you have thought that the gift of God can be purchased with money. Now, was it wrong to desire the gift? No, no, nothing wrong with it because the gift is free. It is free. You see anyone manifest the gift of God, you should know what to do. Go to the Spirit of God. I like what I saw today. But it's the thinking that with my money, I can purchase that gift. I'm telling you this truth. People do this practice today. I mean, it's all over, especially in the Pentecostal system. It's all over. But I tell you one truth. It leads people further into error than, than, than any other thing. I'm telling you this truth. You know why? Because they don't contact this thing directly from the Spirit of God. They contact it from a man. And guess what that, that does? It doesn't affect your personality. But when you go to the Holy Ghost, Lord, I desire this thing. I want to walk in this thing. Guess what the Holy Ghost begins to do in you first? He begins to prepare your heart. He begins to prepare your being. He begins to make, he begins to form in you the attitude and the character to carry that kind of gift. So when eventually you begin to manifest that thing, he has taught you the discipline of that thing. So, but with money, now you find lots of rascals. In you know what I mean by that? You find lots of rascality going on. Could, could Peter and John had laid hands on him for that anointing to be impacted into his life? Yes, they could. And it would have worked. But Peter, walking by the principles of truth, said to him, your money perish with you. Now look at what Peter said. Verse 21, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgiven thee. Peter just confirmed that Simon was not born again. Now, you, 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 you imagine this, they, Peter and John comes into town, Philip comes to welcome them, and there was this right-hand man with Philip, and he said, oh, oh meet, meet my right-hand man, or oh, meet my assistant, his name is Simon. Oh, wow, 
Simon, oh, Simon used to be, you know, a, you know, you know, he used to be, but then he had the word of God and he got converted and, and he's been following me ever since then. Man, the guy, he arranges the church before we meet. He does this and he does that. He goes around following up everybody, making sure they are inside. Wow, Simon, good, good, good to meet you. God bless you. How are you? Now, Philip himself, Simon himself had not received the Holy Ghost. And he saw these guys ministering the Holy Ghost. And Peter say, says, look, your heart is not right. And Peter said something very strong. In that verse 24, he said, thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Do you know what that means? It means it's not for you. How can Peter say this thing is not for you? Because he was the one that preached on the day of Pentecost. For the gift is to you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as our God, Lord shall call. Peter preached that message. Now he's standing before one fellow and he said, this thing is not for you. He said, you don't have part in this matter. Why? Because his name was not in the book. You see, now these are the kind of people who come into the church and begin to corrupt the church with their wrong thinking, with their wrong reasoning. And sometimes they make you, you hear them and they sound so right. They sound so convincing. But you see, if the Spirit of God is not what is guiding you, you will be carried away with their doctrine. Um, that's what I'm saying. This is, we do these things. We, we do it. But we don't realize that, see, it is a thinking problem, a thought pattern that is wrong. How would you think? How did that even come into your heart that you can purchase the gift of God with money? How? 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 You see a healing minister and you say, oh, I know what to do. I'm going to sow a seed into his life and I'll tap into that thing. Listen to me. Ask it. Now, but, but, but people do it and it works. I told you to work. But the truth is what will be the outcome of that person's life at the end of the day. See that now? What will be the outcome of your life? You are going to contact something that is heavy, that your system have not been developed or, or formed or trained to carry. So at the end of the day, you will become a disgrace to the body of Christ. Some have contacted it like that who had no portion or part in that business. So we have people whose names are not in the book of life. We have them as pastors. We have them as church leaders. And those are the ones Peter refers to as spots and blemishes in the body. But I'll tell you something, Jesus is doing the cleansing. He's doing the cleansing. I'm telling you, the cleansing is not a loud thing that he's doing. No, but he's doing the cleansing. There's a separation taking place. You know, the Bible said before that day comes, there will first be a falling away. Who's, who do you think will fall away? It's those people he's referring to. They will fall away. Why? Because they will not be able to carry the intensity of the work that the Spirit of God is going to be doing at that time. So what happened? They get discouraged and they may begin to fall away. So you find people who function in the anointing and today you cannot differentiate whether they are ministers or they are businessmen you can't differentiate that anymore you can even they cannot tell they, they can't tell whether they are businessmen or they are preachers of the gospel they really can't tell i'm telling you, they can't tell so because you see them now they they, they feel you now i've been preaching the gospel for like 20 years now you know the lord has has rebranded me now uh, he's he's sending me into the corporate world and then be careful who you listen to. Be careful what you do with the truth. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. No one truly who have contacted the anointing of God can trade it for another life. No one. No one. You, there is no way you could have, you can carry Branda Zaigabara. No way, it's impossible. Very impossible. But there are many who don't know. They didn't really contact the Spirit of God. They didn't. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. Ah, now these are the people I'll end with this. Because they are not here to fulfill the word of the Lord. And I mean the word of God, the good word of the Lord. They cause confusion in the body. So right now I pray for you. That the Spirit of God will protect you from evil men. Wherever you are right now, I pray for you. That God himself will put a shield of protection around you. And to deliver you from the hands of evil men. Who seem like they are in the kingdom, but they have no part in the kingdom. May the Lord deliver you from them and set you free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.